It's 3.15, and that means it's time for... The Real Deal with Bill McNeil. That's right. Welcome once again to The Real Deal with Bill McNeil. I'm your host, Bill McNeil, and you're probably wondering exactly what is The Real Deal today. Hey, good question. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. I would expect a lot of news coming out of DC, Marvel, and the other publishers this week, and we certainly got loaded up this weekend. In fact, Doc and I had already recorded a video about Adventures versus X-Men uh, that's apparently coming up in 2022, but I don't have enough room for all of it, so I've tacked that on to the end of this because we've got some other stuff to talk about. It looks like we have a possible location or landing spot for G.I. Joe and Transformers in the uh, in the form of an, I, uh, an Image Comics imprint. We have a, a sequel to one of the, my favorite comic series of the last two or three years. We live, got the details for that. We also have Marvel announced Captain uh, Captain Carter. <laughs> I have some uh, thoughts on that, as well as a season two of Brian Michael Bettis' Naomi, which is probably the best thing that he's done in his time at DC Comics. So lots of news coming out. And I have so much stuff already recorded, there just wasn't room for for two videos for this so it's going to be one bigger video like i said doc and i have a little bit of an extended conversation about this avengers versus x-men at the end but I expect a lot of stuff coming out and definitely the uh, solicitations this week and i got two two great interviews i hope you guys love them that are going to be coming out on tuesday and friday with two of my uh, favorite creators in comics right now so let's get into this stuff because we got plenty of news to jam through it we've been talking about gi joe transformers and the hasbro license the rumor was that they were going to be leaving IDW. Then, you know, the, the assumption was that they would be following Magic the Gathering over to Boom. But apparently, there are other suitors out there, one specifically being Skybound, Robert Kirkman's imprint at Image Comics. And according to The Hollywood Reporter, Skybound is currently in negotiations with Hasbro to acquire the publishing rights to G.I. Joe and Transformers which both currently reside IDW Publishing, of course. No word on My Little Pony or any of the other uh, properties that would come with the Hasbro license. And according to the report, Robert Kirkman himself is a fan of both properties and has personally gotten involved in acquiring the license rights, though it is not expected he would actually write either of the titles himself. Furthermore, a, if a deal should be reached, do not expect a, a G.I. Joe or Transformers comic from Skybound imprint until 2023 at the earliest. I think this is great news. I think uh, both G.I. Joe and Transformers have been greatly underserved by some by lack of good creative, to be completely frank, with, with uh, IDW Publishing. feels like they ran ideas and they've, um, I don't know, they just they fell in with the, the current trend of, of ruining other people's stuff by throwing in modern-day uh, you know, ideology, politics, and whatnot. Why do we need uh, <laughs> uh, Transformers with gender identity issues? I have no idea. Of course, they are also doing some gender swaps on uh, on very well known GI Joe characters as well, and apparently Hasbro has had enough. I don't know if those were the major reasons that they decided to um, to let go of IDW as a licensing partner. We do know that IDW's finances have been in the toilet for a very long time, and they they have not looked like they've been on in solid ground for a while. But I think Robert Kirkman and Skybound would be a great landing spot. They certainly haven't done a lot of licenses in the past, but Robert Herkman knows how to create a universe, knows how to manage properties, knows how to manage his imprint, and he seems to have some level of reverence for the actual characters in the universes, so I'd imagine he would do his best to uplift them rather than destroy them. So I think this is a good news if it does take place. Obviously, we will probably know this, I would imagine, in, in 2022, if they did acquire the license, uh, that's when you would see the actual... Um, the big announcement, but I'm in favor of this. I think Robert Kirkwood's, uh, you know, he's, he's a borderline genius in comic books today, so that would be a good spot for them. Now let's get into some news I'm even more excited about. Aftershock Comics have announced We Live Age of Platians, and this is uh, the new series spinning out of Inaki and Roy Miranda's We Live, one of my favorite series that if you, you've heard me talk about here on the channel, I, uh, I cannot stop gushing about how good this thing is. Obviously, Age of the Platians does refer to the big reveal at the very end of the very first series, which took place in the year 2084 in a world damaged by calamities and monsters. Age of Platians picks up at the end of that series in 2090 with the, the titular heroes, or not the titular, but the, the heroes returning Hototo and Tala 
but the Miranda brothers say that the book will explore their relationship and include new characters, General Terrassa and General Nesbo, who are responsible for the population of Megalopolis number nine. This is what Roy Miranda himself had to say. The story begins six years after the, the appearance of the Palladians in Megalopolis nine. After an eph ephemeral time of prosperity, the city faces a new critical situation. We are in the middle of a very delicate moment where a decision will have to be made for the survival of the population. It's a story that deepens in the concept of heroism, a kind of heroism that can that few can assume what it needs to be built from a place of defeat. The readers that have followed us since the first arc will see how our how the universe of We Live has grown along with the characters, especially our main characters, who have grown physically, but mostly psychologically. That is what Roy Miranda had to say. This is what his brother Inaki Miranda had to say. Megalopolis Knight is under attack from the new nature. A third party of its territory is in ruins. The population that is still alive is suffering from direct consequences of a siege. Famine starts to be an approaching problem. Medicines are scarce. Makeshift cemeteries are being built. Entire areas have been reconditioned as refugee camps. I don't think I need to point out the specific uh, parallelisms to our, current, our close reality. Hopefully, that... Obviously, you could say some things, uh, you know, with with uh, modern, you know, news or whatnot, you know, with the climate change and everything. That were certainly some of the the underlying um, themes within We Live. Hopefully, they don't lean on that too much. You know, despite that last uh, sentence from Anaki Miranda, I have great faith that that will not be the case. The first series was great. I couldn't be more excited for this. I know that they had teased this with their. Uh, Free comic book day in 2021. I think I just think we live as beautiful. I have a video up in the next day or two about why I think comic books are the best medium, and I have uh, examples of all these things. And I absolutely use we live as one and as, a, as an example of how comic books can exceed other mediums as far as storytelling and, and world building. I truly believe that, and this is uh, a brilliant series. Couldn't be more excited for this. I'll absolutely be. Uh, reviewing it here on the channel, and I'm super excited. If it lives up to my expectations, you're going to be hearing about a lot right here on Thinking Critical because I do like to signal boost all the things that I think that are great out there. Moving on to some Marvel Comics news, and I'll be honest, I'm a little bit less, not a little bit less, I'm far less uh, enthusiastic about this one, but I know a lot of people are going to be excited. Captain Carter is leaving the, uh, what was it, the, the What If cartoon series on Disney Plus and is making her way into comic books and Marvel Comics released the first details of the cup upcoming Captain Marvel series written by Jamie McKelvey and illustrated by Mariko Cresta the five issue Captain C Carter launches in March 2022 and introduces Captain Carter in an adventure that will find Peggy Carter as a woman out of time facing the reappearance of an old foe in modern day and deciding what she stands for as a wielder of the shield. This is what writer Jamie McKelvey had to say. I'm as big a fan as Captain Carter, well, uh, of the Captain Carter we've seen on screen as anybody. I find that hilarious because we haven't really seen the character really on screen. It's all, I think that's only been the What If uh, a series. It's <laughs> This isn't like a storied character with a lot of history. So that is like, I, I understand you're not supposed to go, well, there's a lot of stuff I can do with this character because it's never been, but you, you don't have to sit there and, uh, and lie about it. You can't be a biggest fan because... This character essentially has never existed before until right now. But whatever. This is what J.B. McKelvey had to say. So I jumped at the chance to create my own version. I'm having a great time exploring what it would be like for Peggy to wake up after nearly 80 years after the end of the war. The world remembers the myth of Captain Carter, but to Peggy, the reality was just yesterday. Now she finds herself in a nearly unrecognizable new world. How does she fit in? Can she be the superhero people want her to be? Exploring these questions has been really exciting. And I love the world Marika and I have come up with. I can't wait for the people to see Marika's pages. There's so much life and energy to Peggy and the rest of the cast. And the action scenes are stunning. I understand there are going to be people excited about this. This is a skip -a rooney for, for the West Dog. But if you're excited, I am excited for you. Whatever comic books uh, are, are in your wheelhouse, I think uh, you need to go out there and support them. I'll, I'll 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 keep up hope that there's a good Captain America comic book around the corner, and yeah, th this is it for me. But I hope it's for you. Now the last uh, last announcement before we get into that conversation with Doc and the upcoming Avengers versus X Men event, 
DC announced that Naomi's second season is finally debuting in early 2022. Naomi season two, a six series, a six issue miniseries by Brian Michael Bendis, David S. Walker, and Jamal Campbell. The series follows the titular teen hero in her most challenging journey yet. As she tries to uncover the truth behind her family's legacy, the book will feature appearances from Superman, Black Adam, and Zumbato, the mass murderer who has clashed with Naomi McDuffie in the past. Obviously, there was originally supposed to be a season two. Brian Michael Bennis is all but confirmed. He took that and threw it into Justice League. That's why it's been so boring and stupid lately. I know a lot of people like this, and, and many consider this the best work that Mike, Brian Michael Bennis has done at DC Comics. That would be Naomi, not Justice League, when it was her own uh, you know, um, self-titled book. So there you go. You're getting your sequel. It's finally coming to fruition. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, once again, I'm not subjecting myself to Brian Michael Bennis, unless it's on a character that I really love. And unfortunately, Naomi just isn't one of those. But if this is the, the comic book for you, it will be coming out in early 2022. I know a lot of people like this. The first issue is very valuable. So if you have that, make sure you keep that in as pristine condition as you can, because it's probably worth a couple hundred bucks by now. And uh, there you go. Now let's get Doc on the channel. Let's talk about the the you know the hint, not the hint. Marvel all Marvel said it. We're getting Avengers versus X Men in 2022 as well. <laughs> Welcome. Sorry. Welcome back to Make It Critical. This is Wes. Now, many of you may have seen within the last few days, Marvel Comics started previewing their free comic book day for uh, for 2022. And there's a peculiar title in here, Doc, one that I think you and I need to talk about, at least a little bit. And it is the Avengers X-Men number one. It's going to be Kieran Gillen, Jerry Duggan, Dustin Weaver, and more. Peculiarly, there's no... Jason Aaron on there. It's only the X-Men team. And this is what they're saying, that this free comic book day will lay the groundwork for an event that will erupt across the Marvel Universe in 2022 and drastically alter the relationship between Earth's Mightiest Heroes and Mutant Kind. I don't know. Uh, uh, they've already tried this once. It didn't really work. Although it felt like it says this is laying the groundwork. It feels like they laid the groundwork for X-Men versus Avengers or at least the Marvel 616 universe, like since the very first day of House of X, Powers of Ted. Yeah. Um, nobody needs AVX 2. We all saw how Civil War 2 went. Um, AVX 1 wasn't anywhere near as good as Civil War 1 was. And this seems even more forced. I mean, yeah, they have been. They have been setting it up. I mean, sort of like kind of. Yeah, because you know how they did that? By making all of the mutants into segregationist drug dealing supremacists. That's a great way to to set up a conflict with the Avengers of the being Earth's mightiest heroes. Not only that, but now the mutants are Mars's mightiest heroes. So you get Mars versus Earth. I mean, it's kind of at this point it's fucking cliche though that's what i'm gonna it's, come they hit every so cliche to get there boring right now we've got this uh event going on devil's reign and i don't think that first issue is bad i, I recommended it but it's civil war three yeah it's also kind of seems like it's a continuation of outlawed we've just had the clone saga but for miles morales we just had world war she hulk we just had heroes reborn like how many of these these ideas can they just could you know, rehash, but worse than the first time. It's like, there's got to oh. be, there's got to be a hump. There's got to be some time when they, when they say, you know what? Us doing, redoing shit very badly is not good for the future of the company. Let's do something new and hopefully not badly. Or even if it was bad, it won't feel as bad because we haven't tasted something already tasted better. One one villain manipulating like 900 superheroes into fighting each other is something that they are just not going to stop doing until until it stops selling comics. You know the best way to make this stop? Don't buy Devil's Reign. Don't buy AVX3 or whatever the hell this is going to be. Just literally don't buy it at all. Because they are not go the only thing they have left. They already neutered all their villains. That's the problem. Marvel has yes. spent 
the last 20 years neutering their villains um making them easy wins for some fucking squirrel girl character that nobody gives a shit about you know how you can't why you can't really have galactus or thanos as a giant threat because squirrel girl kicked the shit out of them you know why craven is no longer ever going to be a serious threat against uh spider-man because like for like two years he was the joke villain in every one of those teenage girl comics um so no that's what you have mole man for yes they (laughs) we've we have spent marvel has spent the last 20 years either making them not villains making all of their villains either not villains or neutering them completely so you know what when you want to do a big event all you have left is hero versus hero that's it and that's not going to it's not going to stop being done until they actually make the villains actually threatening again and people keep buying it it's really cliche at this point well we just had that uh, interview we talked about it on comics aficionados with uh with jordan white one of the legion of doofuses the x-men group editor and in that interview it's quite clear he knows that these two 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 mutants are out there just murdering people but he's like it feels kind of justified it's you know the leadership that they don't understand good versus evil heroes and villains they think they're all in the same they're in the same bucket it just depends on how they categorize them that day yeah no the um yeah you you have a bunch of people whose moral compass spins like a fucking clock um in fact actually it more spins like a record um and so doing characters that are essentially supposed to have a relatively firm moral compass pointing north and then villains who have very 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 flexible moral compasses and it always points towards themselves that's the whole point here And you have a bunch of editors and a bunch of writers and a bunch of that don't believe in objective, like morality and ethics. They think, nope, it's to get something done that we think is a good thing. So it's fine. That's that's what it comes down to. And what we're also seeing, obviously, with Kieran Gillen being one of the co-writers, along with Jerry Duggan, Jerry Duggan's on X-Men, Kieran Gillen's on Immortal X-Men. It feels like is he replaced Jonathan Hickman as like the big picture guy for X Men, like the kind of the bigger name in there. I find this terribly disappointing. I'm a Kieran Gillen fan, but Kieran Gillen's X Men or his take on mutants absolutely sucks. Yeah, <clears throat> there's a reason why during Kieran Gillen's first tenure in that X office, he managed to make X Men. Uncanny X-Men, the least important book behind X-Force. Rick Remender made X-Force a larger and more important title than X-Men. That's pathetic. And uh, you know what? Kieran Gillen is very, very symptomatic of he was the next step of all the mistakes that were made by bringing in Fraction. Yeah. You know, Fraction was the start of it. Kieran Gillen like took it to the next level and Jason Aaron was kind of the I guess the 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 final stage of that until it was such a broken well no until until it was such a broken title that they actually had to start uh you know that they weren't able to keep an ongoing going that was the thing so you yeah Hey, if you want to call Matt Fraction the original sin and the downfall of the mutants, the real downfall of the mutants, I'm all for it because uh, I don't think, oh, I think originally so. when he came onto the scene, they liked that he had a different take on superheroes. But when you're you're you do the same take and it's all about ruining the heroes that everyone loves in in uh, or order to prop up his own original creations in their places, and he's done it on every single fucking title that he does. Uh, you know, it gets old fast and, it, you know, it's just a path of, de- of, of deconstruction throughout Marvel and DC. And uh, you're you're right. You know, Kieran Gillen, you know, obviously, you know, Kieran, picked up that ball and walked and ran with it. K- 
Kieran Gillen's job in that is he he loves to come in. He's the guy that follows up somebody else royally fucking up a book and completely deconstructing it and then putting it together wrong again. And that's that's what Kieran Gillen's job is. And you know what? I'm sorry. Hickman came in entirely deconstructed the way the X-Men were going, you know, the 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 concept of the X-Men. And then he left while it was still broken. Fraction broke it. Now, Hickman might have put it back together if he would have stuck around. But you know what? He didn't. So now they bring in Kieran Gillen for mop-up duty to totally, completely break something permanently. I don't really blame Jonathan Hickman. You know, he's sitting there working, you know, kind of side by side in kind of a leadership role with Jordan White, one of the Legion of Doofuses. He was just being run roughshod over, you know, all these untalented writers are essentially dictating to him the direction of the X-Men and Jonathan Hickman's vision gets pushed to the side. I would have walked away too. Honestly, no, what I would have done is I would have wrote the exact comic that I wanted. If they would have fired me, fire me. If they, if, they, and I would come out and say, no, mine's the only one that matters. Sorry. All the rest of them. You brought me in to have a vision. I'm going to have that vision. You can either stick along for the ride or you can fire me. It's that simple. And that's what I would have done in that position. But so, yeah, I do kind of blame him because he didn't have the balls to stand up to some ukulele playing douche that looks like he should own a haberdashery and not be a comic book editor. Well, you know, that's that's uh, obviously we've talked enough about Jordan White, but. So are you saying that you're not excited for the X-Men Avengers crossover event? Fuck no. <laughs> Cuz the last thing we need is another one of these. I wish they would just put a moratorium. You know, have little crossovers between characters or titles. Yeah. You know that like hey, there's two issues here, there's two issues there, they cross over and it's a fun story. Have a yearly X-Men event, go for it. You know, have an uh, Avengers event every year, have a Star Wars event every year. And maybe every two or three years, you can have a big crossover with everything. But there, the, there's so many events. There's nothing to get excited for. And, you know, like, are you looking forward to a Kieran Gillen, Jerry Duggan led fucking X-Men Avengers book? Fuck no. They're going to drop Fuck the ball so hard. No. It's not even funny. They're going to drop the ball so hard. It's going to be a plight. Um, no, this is going to be this is going to be a disaster. Look, Jerry Duggan is the you know what i used to think he was the least terrible person in that office like idea wise i'm you know to to take over for hickman he was the least offensive to x-men fans i was wrong i'm sorry well he hasn't um, really wrote written a bad x-men issue yet they've just gotten progressively worse and, and they've been the exact battle. same and they've been the yeah. exact same issue every month um no, but I, I think that actually I would have taken Leah Williams on the main X-Men book at this point over because she can't. You're fuck just talking out of your ass. No, no way. No, because there's no way worse because nobody would actually respect her enough in the in, in the comic world to actually give her the big crossover event. Yeah, but she's only like fucking up. Eye boy and Polaris and fucking Dakin. Yeah, this is shit. <laughs> I just figure as long be, Jerry Duggan has the cred to actually be on an event book. If 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 Leia was was the writer of X Men, they'd be like, we can't give it a, a, a massive trial event. Of Magneto. That's an but event book. No, it's it's a tiny little mini series spinoff of her own canceled book. Yeah, it's it, an event it, series. It, it it's not a line wide event. It's not an no no. It's not a event. crossover. It's absolutely it's not, not a cr yeah. They they wouldn't give her that. They'd be like, we can't do that event until she's off the book. I wish they'd stop doing this, though. I'm shocking. I'm cynical about this. I do not see anything good coming out of this. And uh... no, this is going to be a disaster and a waste of money and a waste of time. And dear God, I'm going to say this. But somehow Bendis's AVX will have been better than whatever this ends up as. I could already predict that. And Bendis's AVX was fucking terrible. And those those aren't predictions, people. Those are spoilers. Yeah. <laughs>